All right, this will be the last in the series of best time to take Social Security. This will be part four. Here we're going to have Kathy again. She's 62 years old. I keep saying this. She has her Social Security statement in front of her, and she says, I have the option of taking it now at 62, and I'll get $1,500 a month. Take it at 66, and I'll get $2,000 a month. Or take it at 70, and I'll get $2,640. So she's sitting here trying to make the decision which to take it. In this case, though, we're going to throw a curveball. We're going to say she has $200,000 in her 401k. Now, she needs $20,000 a year to get by. All right, so the first year she needs $20,000. We'll inflate that by 3% a year, just cost of living, and so on and so on. So that's what we're going to say. So now the question is, she has $200,000 as invested aggressively, I think. We'll say, yeah, it is. As invested 100% stocks. Should she wait to take Social Security, take it at 66, or wait until she's 70, or take it now? So let's dive into this. This will be interesting. I don't know the answer. I'm kind of going through this uh, while I'm using this video here. So let's find out. So again, her net worth is $200,356 because she has to have some in a, uh, in a brokerage account for which the, uh, the, 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 the net cash flows go into this brokerage account uh, some best aggressively. So she has 200,000, yeah, in the S&P 500 index, and she's got one share of S&P 500 as well. So whatever she has net cash flow, it'll go into this brokerage account, if that makes sense. I'll show what I'm talking about here in just a second. So we have goals, uh, as retirement expenses, 1666, just a nice round 20,000 a year. And we have income, and she's going to take her Social Security, in this case, at 62. Her full uh, PIA is 2000 a month at 66. So let's see how this shakes out. All right, so we're going to go down to retirement. All right, we're going to go to cash. Let's go to, I just curious about taxes first. Yeah, so she, oh, right, yeah, she does have to pay some significant taxes later on. But yeah, let's go to cash flow. And we're going to go to cash flows here. And I just looking around net flows. All right, so she has these net flows. So she, again, she's taking Social Security. That's eighteen thousand a year. Her total expenses are nineteen ninety two, which makes her cash flow deficit of nineteen ninety two. All right, she has no uh, no taxes because she's paying. Uh, she's well below the standard deduction in terms of her, her total income. So no taxes here at all. And so she needs one thousand nine hundred ninety two dollars from her portfolio. And I'll show you how that's happening here. We go to accounts. We go to withdraw from accounts, and there's the uh, she's taking it from her taxable account first. Eh, I wish she didn't do that. That's annoying. And then she's taking it from her portfolio here. All right. So anyway, that's what's going on. So that's 1992. All right. So now, um, and that okay. Actually, let me go back to cash flows. It says one thing about right capital it doesn't let you decide from where to take the money from. It actually annoys me. Uh, it makes it you do pro rata or it comes from taxable accounts first, tax the first, second, tax free last. I, I wish you could focus on one account. You could pick which account it comes from. All right, but anyway, so now we got 18,000, 18,468, 18,948, and she has net flows, negative net flows, 1992, 2124, and that's coming from the portfolio, the $200,000 that she had. And then she'll start having mandatory distributions here, 12759 So now she has positive cash flows. And all that will be going back into her taxable account. Uh, if we go to additions to account, I actually, maybe it's not additions, RMDs, what it is, RMDs right there. And we'll see, these are her RMDs, but because she's not spending them, uh, they're going back into her taxable account. And that's growing at 7.5% as well. So let's just double check to make sure the investments, yep, 7.9 looks good. 401k, 7. Point, I'm 7.4, excuse me. Yep, good, okay, good. All right, so let's go back to retirement, cash flows, and slowly but surely she'll start paying more and more tax because her portfolio is growing. If you look at, uh, Here's a 401k. It goes from 213 all the way up to 349 when she has start RMDs. And then when she dies, it's 504 and she leaves 620 tax free to her heirs, but her 401k is 504. All right, so let me start doing some spreadsheets. We'll be right back. Thanks. We, we got the three spreadsheets, or I guess six, and uh, we're taking uh, taking Social Security at 62 at $18,000 a year, taking Social Security at uh, 66. Today it's twenty uh, uh, two thousand a month, twenty four thousand a year. We're taking that seventy. Today is twenty six forty uh, a year a month. 
So let's see what it shakes out to. So again, we're we're pull, we're spending uh, two thousand uh, twenty thousand dollars a year is what our income needs are. We have two thousand two hundred thousand in an IRA slash four hundred one k. So we're going to either get that twenty thousand a year from our IRA and four hundred one k, or from our Social Security, or for a combination thereof. <clears throat> so let's see what we got. So the person at sixty two, Kathy took at sixty two. She'll die with a net worth of $1.125 million, of which $504,000 is in a taxable account, i.e. it will be taxed, and $604,000 is in a tax-free. So if we times this, uh, let's, let's do this by 0.25, that would say one point, actually 0.75, excuse me, 0.75. So net of taxes equals this plus this. So net of taxes should have right under a million dollars. She would have paid um, total outflows. She would have had $978,000 of outflows, total outflows, $765 of inflows. Um, I guess we got to do it here, actually. Scratch that. We'd have One point two seven eight million of inflows because you have to take a required distributions out as well. Uh, so one point two seven eight million of inflows, nine hundred seventy eight thousand dollars outflows, which includes taxes and the rest between the two go over to the taxable account. All right, so let's take a look. So seventy four thousand in taxes, uh, one million dollar net worth is what she's leaving. Okay, so now she takes that sixty six. Here we have one. Let's do this again. We're going to equals this times. 0.75. We're going to do this equals this plus this. So here she has 1.1 million of net worth. So a 10% more. This is taken at 66 or full retirement age. 1.1 million of liquid net worth, uh, of which uh, after tax and that net net worth. So after taxes, significantly more than the other. Um, let's keep going down. And her total. Outflows 976 or total is this total inflows? Yeah, total inflows. That's that's a tough one to gauge actually, but anyway, I'm really just all right. So her total so anyway, at the end of the day, she pays sixty four thousand in taxes and she has a higher net worth uh than what she did at sixty two. Sixty four thousand taxes, the other case she paid seventy four thousand dollars in taxes, and at sixty two she's leaving uh, nine hundred ninety thousand dollars, basically one million in net worth, and at sixty six, she's leaving one point one million. So she paid basically ten percent less in taxes and has a ten percent higher net worth. Okay, so that's interesting. And then at age seventy, uh, she'll have. Well, yeah, I mean, this if you're looking at net worth, there's really no, no. All right, oops. Yeah, there we go. Equals this plus this. So here she has 1.145 million in net worth, taken at 70, and she'll have paid $45,000 in taxes. And total income, total inflows would be, uh, bear me just a second. That's, yeah, we do want total inflows. That's right. So total inflows are 1.24 million. Total inflows here were 1.27 million. And total inflows here were 1.278 million. So all the inflows are about the same, actually. That's interesting. At 62, she's leaving 1 million in net worth, net taxes. At 66, at taking at 66, she's leaving 1.1 net of taxes. At taking at 70, she's leaving. 1.145, so $45,000 more. At 70, she paid 45,000 in taxes. At taking at 66, she paid 64,000 in taxes, and I think it's 74,000. Yeah, see, it's, it's uh, that's a tough one there. I think uh, so. We got again. Let's go back to this chart right here. I don't think there's any right answer. To be perfectly honest with you. Um, it's definitely not 62. It's just not 62, man. There's no other way around that. The question is between full retirement age and net worth. Now we're just using a single person. 
So net worth at 62 was uh, 1 million, was uh, <clears throat> one point, at, at, uh, oops, net worth, I'm sorry, uh, 66 was 1.1 million. And 1.1, I think it was 75 million or something like that. Uh, total income, or just say total inflows, 1.24 million here. Your total inflows at uh, 1.27 million. At 62, it was 1.27, yeah, 1.28 million. Taxes were uh, 45,000 here, basically 45, 65, and roughly 75. So, again, if you're trying to leave the most to your heirs, you want to take Social Security later. If you're trying to live off more money, you want to take uh, Social Security at 66. Uh, 62 might be able to uh, take a little, in this case, leave a little bit more money, but yes, you're paying a lot more tax and you're leaving less. So, I don't like that. It's just, it's, it's a conundrum between 66 and 70. Um, I'm going with 70. I, but it's not nearly as cut and dry as what we might have been claiming to people when you factor in cost of living adjustments and whatnot in taxes. Now, this is just for a single person. When it comes to a married person, it's going to be different. But uh, that's interesting to me. I, uh, I'm, I'm interested to see that a single person, definitely, if she were to take it at 66, I would have no argument at all. There is no argument to make. If she takes that at 70, that's fine, but if she doesn't live, you know, beyond 78 or 79, she should have just taken that 66. I think I'd, for a single person, I'm thinking I'm probably going to default to taking that 66, unless we're doing mass Roth conversions and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, hope you find this helpful. That'll be the last one of this series. So uh, smash the like button. Love to hear your thoughts on this for sure. Does it convince you? Any thoughts, questions, concerns, put it in the comments. I'd love to hear what you thought, uh, what you're thinking is, because uh, this is of interest to me. All right, we'll see you next time.